Hello, everyone. I'm here back with the part two of the weekly talk. In this block, I will explain about our, about our raffle and also about the two-week break, the decision behind, and, uh, and then my personal opinion very quick, but that's personal. Usually, I don't share this stuff with the team, but, you know, in the last one I shared, I'm going to share again with you guys, and I also share Saturday. So what is the raffle about? I'll be giving away two year-long memberships. And that will be valid for adults or kids. So if you're a parent buying the raffle and you don't train, the and you are the lucky one, you're going to be saving 1400 a little bit over 1400 in a year because your kid will be able to train um, for free for an entire year. And you can also freeze if you don't use it. Now, if you're an adult, you, have, you will have the chance to get the all-access package if you don't have already, and you'll be saving over $1,900 in a year. And you can train Muay Thai, unlimited Muay Thai, MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, and combatives. So it's a pretty good deal. So I'll be giving away two packages, and regardless uh, if it's an adult that wins or a kid that wins. How this going to work? I will be The giveaway date will be on February, let me just see here, February 27th. That's a Saturday. I picked this day because that's our third day of our camp. I decided this year I had to, we all had to push back so many of the things and we couldn't plan my birthday party. I canceled, uh, we canceled the end of the year, you know, festivities at the gym, everything that we're planning. We still had the seminar because I refused to completely cancel everything. So who knows me that knows that I, I'm not going to give up. I don't surrender easy or at all. And I decided that regardless, I have to have this three-day camp. That's my sort of my resistance against, um, you know, these hard times. It's my way to be resilient. So I pushed the three-day camp to the last week of February. So we will have on Thursday 25th, Friday 26th, and Saturday the 27th. On the 27th, that's the main event, seminar again, black belt testing again, uh, more belt graduations again, and then the giveaway. How the giveaway going to work? Well, the raffle ticket is $50, and you can buy as many as you want. I'll put the link below here. You can go to our website, and you buy from our website, and you can choose how many tickets you would like to buy to participate in our giveaway. In front of everyone on that day, what I would do is I would get name by name. I would read out loud and the name of the people um, that bought the raffle and how many tickets. And I will put ticket by ticket inside this box, right? So say John buys three tickets. So we're going to get three tickets with John's name inside the box. And then Jack buys five tickets. We put five uh, papers with Jack's name there. Mary buys one ticket. We're going to get one ticket and put there. I'm going to get somebody from the crowd, whoever comes to the seminar uh, to participate, and that person will pick uh, two tickets. The only thing is you can only win once because my goal is to have two people enjoying um, their year membership all access. So, again, if you are an adult, you'll be saving about $1,900 in a year. If you're a, a parent of one of our kids and um, you enter our giveaway, you probably will be saving about $1,400 in a year. And again, the reason why I'm doing the raffle is to help us to raise some funds, to have some backup, because like I mentioned before, we already started having cancellations, even though um, with the new contracts, we explained that we wouldn't cancel because of COVID alone. Since we are planning, if we need to go for a full shutdown, which I don't think will happen because of the state or something like that, we will have to move back to um, online platform. And like it did before, I'll keep providing as much information as possible. And actually, I prepared as a contingency, a way to keep sharing more 
techniques and more videos from my archives every single day for everyone. So every day I will go inside our Facebook group and use our Facebook group as the main hub of techniques, uh, regardless if it's a striking MMA, combatives, or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, but anyways, we are trying to have this sort of a little savings, like in the beginning of the lockdown in March and April, Sensei Phil Rinaldi organized the last fundraising that really helped us. Um, we got about $4,500 that really helped us to pay a couple months of rent. We we didn't have any support or just a very little support from the government when it comes to um, <laughs> quote unquote uh, stimulus, <laughs> which is a joke. Honestly, as a small business owner, we didn't even get like, I think like was something around 3000 or so, which doesn't cover not even uh, half of our expenses in a month. But anyway, the raffle will help us to have some extra money to endure January and February. And in return, I didn't want to go and do a fundraising. I want to give something in return. And in return, at least like we're doing that, um, the giveaway. All right. I'm planning some other things. Also, the people that participated with the giveaway, trying to maybe have a another guest instructor coming in and having a seminar for free uh, or be like a pass or something like that. But definitely the people that contribute with the raffle will have um, how to come to the camp with no cost or anything like that, too. So anyway, the raffle, it's um, it's the cause is to help us have some security, uh, financial security, okay? Um, well, now finishing, we will be closing from, this week we're gonna be w open, um, but until the 27th, when that's when we're gonna have the last open mat day, if anybody wants to come in and hit the bags too, you're welcome. It will be Sunday the 27th, that's our last day open. Um, we will have the open mat, or you can use the bags, or if you want to do a little sparring, the gym will be open at 11 a.m. for whoever wants to come in and burn some calories from Christmas festivities and etc. We will be closed from the 28th to the 11th. So on January 11th, we re reopen. Sylvia and I decided to close for two weeks. Number one, because the numbers have been going up. And a lot of people started freaking out again. So we decided to just give a little buffer of a two-week. We, a lot of people, like I mentioned before, will be uh, celebrating Christmas or Hanukkah or, you know, your holidays with your family. So you're going to be around other people as well. That gives us a good two-week buffer um, so you can check your health and that's a good time also for everyone, my opinion is. Do some of your researches outside mainstream media. Try to read from good sources, real data when it comes to survival rates, when it comes to COVID. It's a new virus. But my own experience and many other people's experience, what I felt was fever, uh, got a little bit congestion, uh, etc. But it wasn't, it was le actually a fraction of the last time I got a flu. But I'm not saying that it's not dangerous because it is dangerous if you have any underlying condition or if you're immune depressed, if you have any uh, immune disease that can put you at risk, or if you are around other people that have those conditions. So it's all about a, you have to manage your risk and you have to assess your risk exposure and make your own decisions. So I live in a household where nobody is at risk, including uh, my mother-in-law. My mom is coming from Brazil and she's not in that group, even though she's older, but she has been also taking um, different medication in Brazil to prevent the infection that has been proven to be uh, working really well. So she's on her protocols. My sister's coming too, and um, she had 
her health issues, but she's also not afraid. So we manage the risk, we assess the risk, and we make our decisions upon our bar education. So take these two weeks to educate yourself, to assess and be aware that's what I'm what I'm doing, okay? So I'm telling you maybe my, my advice for you is at what, actually what I'm doing in my life. But I would uh, make your own assessment, see if you're aware of everything around you when it comes to your health, your nutrition, if you have been doing your follow-ups with your doctors, how you have been feeling, and again, to be able to manage your risk and exposure. Stay away from mainstream media. Usually, uh, this is not political, but I have to, as a my as a, a a coach, I have to tell you guys, and you guys are pretty smart to know that TV is a pro for profit business. Any TV, cable, uh, entertainment is for pro for profit. When you watch. Um, mainstream media news like that they have to keep you hooked my god I don't believe that I can't believe that I'm trying to say something so obvious they need to keep you hooked and there are many mechanisms in your brain and I really 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 suggest you guys to learn the biology of your brain how fear works the mechanisms of fear, how interfere in your brain, the stress that it causes, and how impact your immune system. So again, great book for you guys to read. Take maybe these two weeks and read this book from biologist Robert Sapolsky. And the name of the book is Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Funny title, very interesting extremely scientific and it's biology and it is science so there's no political agenda behind the book the book is about how the stress mechanisms impact your life and your health and your brain and your decisions psychologically speaking so going back to what i was saying i disconnected myself from absolutely any type of mo uh, uh, mainstream media. I don't need the mainstream media to read the news, and I can choose um, wisely, and I'm not a person that looks for confirmation of my own biases, but I try to also research the same news from multiple places. And most important is, I've been when it comes to COVID, I've been trying to read the most recent recent papers and researches from scientific magazines, which still might not hold 100% the truth if those researches cannot be replicated by other scientists. So when you are looking for information and data when it comes to, say, mortality rate and covid and who gets more affected, and who are considered the, the high-risk group, my suggestion, and my only suggestion is, look for credible scientific sources. There are many websites that are based on science and scientists only that have to be approved to be published in those medias. So it's not like me, Luigi, I decide to write something about COVID and my findings and I post. No, th that doesn't work like that in a science world, scientific world. For scientists, researchers and biologists and virologists and doctors to publish in those specific websites, they have to have all their research approved by a panel that also... Also, those researchers have to, uh, people, other scientists have to be able to replicate the same findings. So that's why every study has to break down what process was used to achieve that result. And a step-by-step, -step, so here's my findings, here are the numbers, 
Those are the data uh, based on science, okay? Now, this is how we obtain this information. Now, Dr. Uh, B will get the same process and will follow the step-by-step -step instructions to see if he or she can replicate the same results. Only that way we know in the scientific world that an experiment or research or data um, is real and can be confirmed. So that's where I get my information from, and that's where I get my, the mortality rate from, and etc. And again, uh, this is my personal opinion how I do, and that's what I'm going to be doing in, in the two weeks, learning more, but staying away from being fearful, staying away from um, being paranoid, because if I start having this type of feelings, fear or anger or frustration and etc. when it comes to COVID and my life based on COVID, I will start making the wrong decisions. And that's the way that I see. I'm very vocal and passionate about politics, but that's my prof my, my my personal profile as, a, as an American citizen, Luigi Mondelli, and doesn't reflect the opinions of the gym or the team. That's my personal opinion that I don't mention inside the gym, and I'm not mentioning my political opinions here either. So very important that you guys understand this. What I'm saying is... What, I'm, what I decided to do in my life, to live, to enjoy life, um, while this whole thing is going on. So I decided to make my opinions based on what I read as far as mortality rate, um, infection rate. We already know that it's high. Um, we already know so many people that have survived over 99% or more. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics of who put who uh, inside nursing homes and etc. That's another fact. My point is, go home, look around you, and make your assessments. Are you closer to someone that could be very, very uh, at risk um, if you keep living your life normally? No? Everybody healthy? you have to make these decisions. I'm not talking about wearing masks, not wearing masks, or, or, or following uh, social distance. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about being a rebel or anything. I'm talking about living your life and trying to be happy and making ad adaptations to be able to continue doing, keep doing what you love to do, regardless of what it is, okay? That's my opinion. Like I said before, one life, I have to keep living. So going back, the reason behind the two weeks break is to give this buffer time. And that's, I think it's a, uh, for precaution and safety. Also, I will be listing our core schools that will be open, open uh, around us in New Haven, Fairfield, uh, North Brantford. And you guys are welcome to go train at the other schools while we are closed. I will talk to all the other coaches and ask them permission, but it's a good option for everyone as well, okay? So another long video, raffle, two-week break as a precautionary measure and give a little buffer for everything to come down. Train as much as you can this week, okay? Thank you very much, guys.